Welcome back. Today we're talking about how to work with text in R or character variables. Okay, uh, it's super easy. You're not going to find this difficult. I'm going to walk you through it. The package that we're going to be looking at is string R. Um, I'm going to talk you through how to get that. If you look at here, string R comes with the tidyverse packages, right? So if you install packages tidyverse, that'll give you string R. Library loads the package. And uh, we're going to be looking particularly at a particular data set called the Irish data set. And we're going to look at that here. The Irish data set has got some information here about sepal length, sepal width, but like anyway, don't worry. And then the species over here. And we're going to look at how to manipulate some of the text in this using string R. So let's jump right in. Boom shakalaka. On this YouTube channel, we're creating R programming videos on everything. So the first function I want to look at is the SDRC function, right? And what's that going to do? It's going to take bits and pieces of text from, you can just define it yourself, or take text from an existing data frame and bring them together into one data point. Okay, in this case, let's look at here. We've got the word description. That's a variable heading. Remember when we looked at the original data set, let's have a quick look now. There's no variable called description here. So we're creating a new variable and that variable is going to take text from the species uh, variable, combine it with text that's in the, the sepal length, uh, put a colon between them and then state that these are centimeters. Let's have a look. Here's the outcome over here. So we've got species, sepal length is right there and then we've set it centimeters and all of this is one data point sitting in a new variable. How did we do that? Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Let's take a look at the code. Okay, so here is the code. And by the way, I always use data that you have access to. So you can replicate everything that I'm doing at home on your computer. It's the best way to learn. I'm also gonna tell you at the end of the video how you can access this page because you can copy this data, paste it into R Studio, and try and replicate what I'm doing or play with it or improve upon it. Uh, on the page also there are these annotations. Right, so you will be able to see some of the explanatory notes around the code. Okay, so let's jump right in. Iris, we're piping it into select. We just wanna look at, in the first instance, we're just selecting two variables, species and sepal length. Then we're piping that into mutate. Mutate allows us to either overwrite an existing variable or create a new one. So we're gonna create a new one in this case called description. And that's gonna be equal to, here's our function, str underscore c, so that's saying um, take a few things and pull them together and make them into one new string that will be inside this new variable called uh, description. So what have we got? First, species, right? So species will be, it'll take from the species, for any given observation, it'll take the text that's in species. The next thing it'll do is it'll put a colon and a space the next thing that it'll do is from that same observation or same row, take the value that's in sepal length. And the next thing that it'll do is add a space and then centimeters. And we can see that that's exactly what it's done here, right? It's taken Setona from there. It's taken the 5.1 from there. It's put the colon where we said it would. It's put the gap and then centimeters and created this new thing. So easy peasy, lemon squeezy, boom shakalaka, let's keep going. Next, we're gonna look at the string detect or str detect function that comes with the string R package. And to do that, I want us to look at the MT cars data set. So let's go there. So here's the MT cars data set. Again, built into R, you can practice this at home. Quick thing to notice, a little quirk here is these uh, model names, Mazda, Datsun, et cetera, et cetera, are not underneath a variable name, but these are rather names of rows. So in the same way that variables can have names, rows can have names too. And in this case, uh, we've got all of these uh, models over here that are variable uh, row names. And for the purpose of our particular analysis at the moment, we might want to change this collection of row names into a variable itself. And then I want to uh, identify only models that have an M in them. So we want to detect an M. Let's have a look at the code to do that. Okay, so let's have a quick look. In the first instance, we go row names to columns, to column. So we're taking the row names and we're making a column out of it. And the variable is gonna be called model. Okay, so that's a nice little trick. It's got nothing to do with the string R package, but it's something that is worth learning. Next here, we are going to create a new variable called has M. Remember, we're trying to detect and extract out only uh, now those observations where the model name has an M in it, right? So we're creating a new variable called has M. 
And what is that going to be equal to? Well, it's going to, we, here we use the string detect. Um, and what's going to happen here is string detect is going to, in the, the first argument is model. So it's going to look at the, this new variable that we've just created called model. And the second argument is what should it look for there? And in this case, we're looking for a capital M. Now, what will happen here? This will produce what's called a logical vector. In other words, for every line of code, for every observation, for every row, it will either be true or not true, true or false, that there's a capital M in that particular observation. If it's true, then this has M variable will have a true. If it's false, the has M variable will have a false. So we can then simply do a filter, right? And we can say, filter has m is equal to is has m true if it is keep that observation and then we've just selected a few variables here so that we can have a look at what's left including the model variable and you can see all of these have got a capital m in them okay easy peasy lemon squeezy boom shakalaka let's keep going next we're going to look at the function str underscore sub okay now this can from your text extract out some of that text right? And in this case, can you see we've got short name here? That's not part of the original data set. We've created a new variable called shortened name, and it just has the first three letters of the model name. So Mazda becomes Maz, et cetera, et cetera. So that's kind of quite interesting. Let's have a look at the code to see how we did that. Okay. And in the same way as in the previous example, we've done rows to columns, and we've created a, uh, a new variable called model. Now, We've used the mutate function to create a new variable called short name, and that's equal to our function that we're looking at in this particular lesson, str underscore sub. So that's gonna extract out uh, a subsection of the text in a particular variable. Which variable? Well, in this case, the first argument is the model. The model is the variable we've just created with our rows to columns uh, command above. And then which text should it extract? And the next two arguments are start on the first the first point, you know, so the first character, and then end on the third, right? So that means we'll take the first three, M, A, Z, and then we've done select a couple of things and head, and here we go, here's our data set. Easy peasy, okay, let's keep going. This last one's a nice one, and by the way, there are many, many other functions in the Stringer R package. This is really just an introduction, and I have a whole video series on Stringer R, so go and watch that if you're interested. But here we've got a function called string to upper. I'm using the Star Wars data set. I'm not gonna go into it now, but you can basically see the species here are all in an upper case. And as you can imagine in the original data set, they are in lower case. How did we get there? We've said mutate species. We're gonna overwrite the species variable, string to upper, which data is it gonna use? Species and boom shakalaka, there you go. It's in upper case, as easy as you can imagine. Now, if you want access to this particular page that I'm looking at, you can copy the code, uh, you can look at the annotations that describe what's happening in the code. Uh, you can click on the link on the screen at the moment and that will take you to Learn More 365 where you can get access to this. Thanks for watching. Don't ever change. Don't do drugs. Always do your best. I hope you're doing well. Speak to you soon. Take care. Bye.